how to avoid repetitive values in Excel. This is what we're going to see in today's video. Let's say here I have a stock spreadsheet uh, inventory report, but you don't need to use the same spreadsheet that I'm using here. If you want to avoid repetitive values in Excel, you can follow the same exactly step by step that is going to work for you. Okay. Let's take here, for example, the column D where I have the products. And as you guys can see, uh, let's take, for example, the zinc to repeat this value, this product. So we're going to start here with uh, the date and then I'm going to input here some values, the shelf location, and then I'm going to type it in here again, the product such as zinc, for example. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to use again this product. Excel is not going to allow me to do it. Uh, when I type in the value, I'm going to press enter and looks what's going to happen here. Enter. Excel gives me here a pop-up with an uh, error message. And this error message right here is the message that uh, we just created before. I say we because we're going to see how to do it in this step-by-step. -step. Repetitive value. They try another product as this one is already in the list. Okay, so I'm going to retry here another product. That way Excel doesn't allow me to input here any repetitive values. I'm going to try some random value here, some random product like, such as this, for example, and then I'm going to press enter. Here we go. Excel allows us to do it because this product never appeared before in the list. So let's take a look here and find out how can we avoid repetitive values in Excel step by step from scratch. Let's go. To avoid repetitive values here in Excel, we can use the count if function. And we can actually use the count if function within the a data validation, for example. So we can append the function to the data validation. But first, let's understand what we have here in the spreadsheet and Let's see how the counting function can help us in a practical way before you do we do the, the data validation. As the first column here, I have the update date and the cost, the brand name, the product name, and the location shelf. Basically, here I have a stock report, an uh, inventory report. And, the, and as, as I said before, you don't need to, to exactly have the same spreadsheet that I have here. You can use your own spreadsheet. If you want to avoid repetitive values in Excel, you can follow this step by step here with me because it's going to work. Whatever the type of uh, the data that you have into your spreadsheet, okay? I'm going to use the column D as the, the reference that I, I don't want to repeat the product's name. So that way I'm going to use the column D, okay, as my criteria. Let's say here I actually have huh, the vitamin C already input here, in, over, over here. I don't want to fill it in here again, but uh, now I can, I can do it. So vitamin C, okay, I did, and I want to avoid it. So the count if function can help us because the count if function can count how many times each one of the products already is appear in the list. Actually, I need a result that is always equal to one because it indicates to me that uh, the product only appear just one time, okay? So the one is the result that I'm looking for. Here in a column to the right hand blank column, you can start with the equal sign count if function, double click here, one, two. We're gonna use this function within a data validation, okay? I'm just building this function right here because it's important to see how the function is going to work in a practical way. The first thing that a county function is asking me is about the range. The range that the county function is going to use as the counting range. And the counting range can be start in the first cell that I have here in the products. So the cell D2 here in this case right here, D2. And then I need to put here column because to duplicate the cell. So D2, 2, D2. See that I have here these two dots right here. or column. And then I can select this last cell D2 and then F4 key to lock the reference. And that way I have here the dollar sign before the letter and the dollar sign before the number. Now I can put here comma and my criteria is going to be exactly the same cell D2. Close parentheses and then enter. Okay, I got here one as result. I'm going to explain why, but first let me just click here in the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down to make sure all the rows contain the same function. And as you guys can see, as I'm going down here through the functions, because we drag down the function range that we are using, as the count range is increasing down because we just drag down the function. And it's exactly what, I'm, what I need to do. As you can see here, for example, protein powder. How many times the protein powder just appeared in this list right here? Or how many times the protein powder appeared before? So we always gonna have one as result if we doesn't have any repeated values. But here, for example, vitamin C, I got a two as result because if I double click here in this function, as we can see, we are using as criteria to count the vitamin C. So we are looking for the vitamin C in the list and the vitamin C already appeared two times. 
one up here and one down here so one and two or one and two so this is why i'm gonna have here as return the number two as result okay as we already understand the, the function how the functions count if works we can double click here in the function in the first cell for example one two i can select everything here right click code because we're gonna use it now let me select the column g right click delete okay before we do the data validation itself it's important to transform this data set here as a table because a table is have a function that a data set doesn't have such as for example if i insert here a new row the table is gonna bring all the functions that i have in the previous rows all the functions all the format and so on and so on so this is why it's important to use a table to make it dynamic let me select so everything here and then I can go to insert table and click OK. Now I already have here a table. Something that you can do to improve maybe the visual of the table, you can click in data design and select here a new table style. I'm gonna stick with a blank one because, or none, because I want you to have the exactly same visual as I already have in the, in the spreadsheet. Okay, so the table is done. Now I can select all the range that I'm gonna use as this criteria to avoid the repeated values this is the this range right here i don't need to select the the header just the the values that make up the column and then i can go to the data here to the right data tools data validation and here i'm going to stick with allow any value instead of use this option i'm going to use custom for example and here we can input our formula right click and paste this is why I said before that it's important to copy and paste the function because now we have here the function. If you didn't copy the formula, you're gonna need to do all over again. But you can do it, okay? Just copy what we did before. It's exactly the same. So I want to allow any value here in the list if this formula here, the result is equal to one, okay? Because if the result is equal to one, it's okay. It means that the product that I input right now never appear before in the list so okay it's perfect always equal to one this is the only thing that i'm going to allow here in this range that i selected before okay so if the formula is equal to one it's allow if not it's not at all so here in the in the last part of the function in the formula equal one that way i'm just gonna allow the the value if it's the formula is equal to one the count if is equal to one another thing that i can do is click here arrow alert because that way every time the user you or any anyone else just type in a product that uh, is already in the list you can create an alert a pop out message a pop up message so you can use a title repeated value for example and as the title and as the error message you maybe you can try to write something like this uh, try another product as this one is already in the list i'm gonna click here okay and we're done whenever now i try to input a product that is already in the list see look here what's gonna happen so i'm gonna first start with the date enter okay now i have here a new row i'm gonna type it in the value i'm gonna type it in the, the location and i'm gonna type it in here the product but i'm gonna use a product that i already used before such as sync for example zinc I'm gonna press enter. Let's see what Excel is gonna is gonna do. Enter. Okay. So here I have the message that I just we just created before. Repeated value. Try another product as this one is already in the list. Okay. Two. And I have only two options here: cancel or retry. I'm gonna retry and try another product. So let me just type in some random things. Okay. Enter. And yeah, Excel allow me to input this random value because this random value is not in the list already so this is how we can avoid repetitive values in a list in excel and i hope this video can help you out and if you have any questions or any suggestions let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow as every day has a new video i see you there